welcome to this new episode of Continuum Gaming and today we are going to have a look at yeah, three games again which will be from Windows Team Mobile in this case and today we are of course going to use something like a forward keyboard which is a Bluetooth keyboard to control these games and of course I'm going to use a mouse, this Bluetooth mouse to control these games too. In some situations you might be able to control them with uh, Xbox One's wireless controller for instance or other gamepads but in this episode I'm not going to show you one of those games. And the games we are going to have a look at are Fishing Diary King of Fishing, um, then Monkey Jungle Speed and Sophia the First World. My name is Gerald. As always I've got yeah, those things with me and of course I've got the Windows 10 mobile enabled smartphone which is called Lumen X, uh, 950XL here and it has a USB-C connector at the bottom and this USB-C connector is connected to the display dock which is standing at the side here and that one is connected by HDMI to the big screen and like this the smartphone is going to generate all the different things we see on the big screen here but with an interface which is more for something like a desktop PC and yeah, as mentioned before, we can use Bluetooth, for instance, to connect all the different devices to our smartphone and like that, play games, do other stuff with it and so on and so forth. If you want to know more about all of this and the technology behind it, have a look at the corner up there. And other than that, thank you for watching. And um, let's start with the first game. Um, the first game is going to be Fishing Diary, King of Fishing. Which is a little bit of a crazy one if you ask me, but whatever. We are going to have a look at it. Here you can see it. I'm going to just start it from my uh, start menu and I'm going to turn around to show you everything in a bit of a better way. And of course to be able to play these games because some of them are pretty fast and yeah, watching at them from this angle of view is really hard for me. So in the end, Fishing Diary is something which is... They are loosely connected to fishing, I would say. So fishing, uh, because we have a couple of different fishes we are going to interact with and stuff like that. But in the end, it's something like a fighting game or maybe a shooting game at least. And um, yeah, as you can see, we have a couple of different options here. One of this is a uh, um, buying option, which we are not going to do. And we can rate everything and of course we can just play. So let's click on that. The game itself is a little bit funky, sometimes there's going to be some kind of an advertisement which you should be able to click away if it's not there, or even if it's there. And as you can see, you have this cannon here, and you can even switch between cannons. So in the end, with this cannon, you can fight the other fishes which are uh, yeah, swimming by. So it's not about fishing really, but you are going to fire some kind of a net on the fishes. So let's see, if I for instance click here, sometimes you don't have enough money and stuff like that anymore. So because I played it already, um, you can see that already we have to wait for the timer to go down again, so I have enough money left to play again. Um, other than that, we can of course have a look at the different options here. So for instance, as you can see, we have some kind of fishes which we can buy with real money, so I'm not going to, but in the end, uh, we could buy a couple of different fishes here which are just looking nicer and you are going to see a lot of different fishes. Um, interesting part about the game is that you can more or less uh, play it yeah, as a screensaver for instance too. So uh, whatever you want to do here, and there are a lot of different fish you can see already here. And um, don't bother with the really big ones at the start. If you have the cannon with the one on it, it's not going to work out. And as you can see, we have now 50 gold uh, here, and with 50 gold we can fire again. And if I, for instance, fire something here, I might get one. Um, very important, if you have the, the uh, weapon one or the cannon one, you can only fight a couple of different uh, fishes here which should be of the same kind. So for instance, if we are level one, we really need to fight those um, yeah, goldfish or whatever that is, small fishes here, which are yellow in this case, 
to get money from it. And of course, as mentioned before, with money we can, for instance, increase our level here and shoot again. And as you can see, now we are able to fight the smaller fish and yeah, middle class fish or something. Very important, all the, uh, the firing we are doing here is going to take a while to go where it is. So fire on something that is really, yeah, more or less where you want them to be, not where they are at the moment. So as you can see, for instance, if we want to catch these, we will have to, no, uh, we will have to fire a little bit uh, uh, in front of them so that they can swim into our fish net, and uh, the fish net can of course, yeah, fly to where we want the fish to be. Yeah, and as you can see, you are going to earn money with that, and of course, if you earn money with that you can then fire more and more. This is more or less a game, so just try to increase your money income by, by fishing and of course getting all the fish you are firing at. And the higher the level is, the better, but the problem is the higher the cannon level, the higher is the money you are going to spend for the armor. So in the end, if you are firing with that, you really will have to have a look at what you are firing at to be able to fight everyone here. And as you can see, some of the fish are still higher than my level. And as you can see, with every fish, well, with every, uh, yeah, firing I do, so every bullet I'm going to shoot on them, is going to cost me now five uh, coins or whatever it's called to get in there. So you really will have to more or less get enough of cells to Compensate that. For instance, if I'm firing this like this and I'm only getting two of the fish of the smallest ones here, I'm only getting two money back, and that is going to hinder me to get better and better. So just try it out. Um, it's a nice little game. You have to get accustomed a, a, a little bit to the delay that is going to happen here. It's inbuilt, it's not meant to be in the, in the input devices or something, but it's inbuilt by just flying there. And of course, if you are doing that, be very careful so that you're not firing all the time and, and thinking, hey, why, why all the fish are still flying around and stuff like that. It's not some of that game where you are just have to fire at everything, but you should think a little bit about what's happening here and how to do everything. Yeah, and other than that, I would say just try it out. I like it somehow. It's very, very slowed down, so you don't have really to care about the time too much. Um, all you will have to care about is, of course, that you have enough money to fight against the other fish or uh, to catch them more or less. And uh, yeah, everything else should be something you can try out. So try it out. Okay, so the next game in this episode is going to be the Monkey Jungle Speed game. Um, it's a game that is more predestinated for being played with touch, but you can play it on the big screen. It's just a little bit more clumsy there. But let's go to the game itself. Um, very important, if you are trying to play this game, don't um, connect your, your gamepad to the, uh, to the game here. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to play the game because the gamepad itself isn't really supported, but it's going to blend out your mouse pointer and you really need the mouse pointer in this game. So, um, I'm going to go to this, and now Monkey Jungle Speed is at the top here, I'm going to click on that. It's a small little running game, something more like Subway Surfer or something, so you're just going to, to try to yeah, run around obstacles and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, the theme is more or less with the monkey on this go-kart. And the fun thing about it is all the different uh, characters which are going to fight against you and stuff like that are jungle themed somehow at least. Um, in the end there's a rhinoceros and stuff like that, cheetahs are there and a lot, uh, different uh, kinds of, of animals and obstacles. And you are going to try to get bananas to really collect them. Um, you don't have to register, you can go to not now. And the uh, problem is if you want to go into the high scores and the, the global high scores, you might want to do that. Otherwise, you will, won't be able to send your high scores to there. But if you don't care about that, just click and you should be fine. Um, you can click on this, but the problem is on the big screen here, there's some kind of a, of a 
problem with that, so I can't really see anything. I can just click on back to go back. And um, yeah, you can do that on your smartphone. So if you want to set something, go to your smartphone and just without connecting it to the continuum way here, um, you should be able to connect or to, to set things up there. And um, other than that, let's just start with this. I'm going to change around again and we are going to play this game. By clicking that. Oh, it dropped out. Never had that before, but let's try it again. Hopefully it should work. In general it should. Uh, as mentioned before, don't uh, connect your, your Xbox uh, controller or your gamepad before it, otherwise you're going to run into trouble here. And um, yeah, what you're going to try to collect here is of course bananas and stuff like that, so just be careful and uh, don't run into the different obstacles, like the, the different, um, yeah, more or less carnage guys there. And let's see if we can start it now. Yeah, and here we go. Um, just give it a little bit and then you can already see this is going to be the play uh, game space, whatever. And uh, you are running on this, this um, yeah, car floor, whatever. Don't go to the sides, there's nothing. Uh, I'm not even sure if you can go to the sides, but in the end, all you have to do is now tap to start, and then you're going to try to collect all the different bananas here, but don't run in against the trunks and the different trees which are falling over and stuff like that here, and of course the different enemies. And you are controlling your car by swiping. This is why I told you, in general, it's a better idea to... Oh, 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 okay. Uh, it's general, in general, it's a better idea to play it on the smartphone itself, not on the big screen, because in this case, swiping is of course done by just uh, clicking on your left mouse button there and swiping to the sides here. And as you can see, there are coming a couple of different animals against you, which you don't want to collide with. And of course, the different um, obstacles you see here, elephants and stuff like that, it's really fun. And if you are on this, to jump, you will have to once swipe up, and it's going to be faster and faster after a while, as you can see. So to play this, yeah, okay, to play this, you really have to be fast after a while and just try it out. As you can see, we got a high score here now, so 99 um, once. And after a while, you could go to anything else you wanted there. Um, this is more or less the game. There's not much more to show you here. So there are a couple of different animals. You can already see them. There's a bear for some reason. But for instance, a rhino, a rhino is going to run against you. There are cheetahs and uh, a couple of other, other animals. I find them yeah, pretty nicely done. Um, the game itself is fine. You can play it pretty good here. There's a lion coming for us. And um, I would just recommend you, if you like this kind of game, just try it out. It's more like a simpler version of it, but it's still a good one, and they really tried to make it yeah, a pretty nice game, and I think it is. Okay, so, and the last game we are going to play today is Sophia the First World. Um, I selected this one because it really has a really great soundtrack. I'm, I'm very impressed by that. Um, interesting thing about it is that it's even even um, more or less translated to other languages. So that is a really, really nice thing to see here. Here you hear it already. <laughs> Pretty interesting that they really translated the song itself too. It's more or less about a little bit connected to Frozen and stuff like that. Not really, it's not from Disney or something, but it's meant to be in the same kind of way. Um, the game itself is pretty simple, but I really like it still because I really got it going here. And as you can see, they really put in some effort to do it because otherwise they wouldn't translate the song itself too. And um, yeah, in the end, 
you can just pl click on play here and see what's going on. Um, it's going to be some kind of a, of a game where you're going to have to puzzle the things into it. Don't know if you know already know them, but in the end you have these kind of collection icons here and you are just going to put them in. It's meant for yeah, children, I'm not sure if it's smaller children, but in the end for children. And of course it's a little bit better suited for girls probably, but depends on whatever your child likes of course. Um, in the end, there we go, and you are just going to try out to fill all the different things. And as you can see, there are a couple of different images and stuff like that, which you are going to have to uh, to finish up. And so you're going to puzzle your way through. Um, yeah, this is more or less what I have to say about this game. There's not too much to think about here. Um, only thing maybe that is important is that if you are using, for instance, your mouse like I'm doing here, you really have to put your mouse pointer in the the right area to put everything in. Don't bother because to put only the other one in. For instance, I'm going to try to do it in the wrong way. If, for instance, I'm going to do it like this, then you would think that, hey, the, the element is covering everything up, but my mouse isn't uh, in the area, and if you do that, it might jump back, it might stick to it, it depends on how my, uh, high the, the um, offset there can be, but in the end, just try it and, yeah, after a while you are getting the hang of it, in general you should put the mouse pointer in there, and not only the element itself. Okay, so that was not perfect. Let's try it again. There we go. And we got the next puzzle. And like this, you're going to go through the whole storyline. It's more or less showing you different kinds of, of sceneries of a small little princess or something. And you will have to learn about all these by just yeah, putting in the different puzzle items. Yeah, and um, I would say if you like it, try it out. If you have, for instance, a little child or something, it's probably a good uh, game for them to get started. And like that, try it out. I think it's fine for what it is. Other than that, thank you for watching, thank you for listening. Have a great day, have a great night, of course, and a great week, because we are seeing us in the next episode, hopefully. Other than that, thank you for watching, have a great time, and please subscribe and comment, and of course, uh, yeah, vote it up. Uh, if you liked the game, or better to say, if you liked, for instance, the, inst the episode. Thank you for watching, and see you around. Bye. Bye.